My name's Tony. I'm one of the co-founders of Infysical. Infysical is like the culmination of like so many years of just like trying out different things, failing, learning um, along the way, you know, so did that with my dual for like four or five years. And then during this last year doing my master's, I met Vlad as well. And so, you know, the three of us got together and, uh, you know, we together created an idea called Ollage. It was like an audio social network idea, applied to YC, got rejected the first time. And then we decided to give this kind of like one, one more shot um, after graduating. So gave it one more shot, uh, ran into this idea in physical, um, which was inspired from our previous ideas. So we actually ran into a problem related to managing secrets, these different like environment variable configurations while building knowledge. Um, and so kind of because of that, uh, you know, the idea of in physical was born. Um, yeah. And then applied to YC, got in, and then things just kind of took off from there. It was closed source for two months. The MVP was actually built out in two weeks. Could work. Like, let's let's give this a shot. This open core model seems promising. It seems like there are a lot of companies and you know, clearly proven companies like GitLab, huge companies that that operate on this model, right? It's not, not, not something like, uh, I would say like, traditional uh, as like a regular like b2b SaaS company but de definitely something different but we were willing to experiment with it at that point in time that meant you know making our entire code base that we'd worked on up until then public and putting it up on on reddit and so we put it up on like three four different like subreddits and all of a sudden overnight to be honest this thing blew up so like within three days, this, you know, it had crossed like 1000 stars on, on GitHub within like three, three days or something of that. Um, like this thing was shared from Reddit to different newsletters. Um, yeah, it was like pretty crazy. Um, and so I kind of, at that point we, we figured like, okay, this is really interesting. So like, this was totally not supposed to happen initially, uh, we didn't know how to how to operate like a open core model right but over time you gain experience and certainly towards like now we're a lot more comfortable with it i can talk about our monetization open core company is pretty standard but the way we think about it um is in terms of two streams right so you have one is uh, people using or in physical cloud product so that's the hosted um or managed solution essentially. So that, that would be basically people going onto our website, making an account and just using it there. And then the second stream that we think of uh, that branches off is the self-hosted side. So, you know, apart from the, our managed solution, there are people that actually download it back. And because obviously we're in the business of storing these very sensitive credentials, it makes sense for a lot of people to want to, you know, host our technology on their own infrastructure and deal with their own sensitive information. And if you zoom into cloud, then we have different tiers. We charge on like a per user per month basis. So we have like a free tier. And our goal, of course, is to make this platform free for individuals and small teams. And, and as other open core companies, basically, you know, you want to ideally charge um, and make money off of enterprise uh, much more. And then for self-hosted, you can use it like also for free, or you can also buy an enterprise license as well. It's it's something that we're still we're still tweaking right now, to be honest, because in physical is still a fairly new product on the market right now, and there's just so many things to do. And you know, honestly, we don't have enough manpower right now to tackle all the different initiatives. But um, you know, monetization and pricing is kind of one of those things that that's on our list. Um, in addition to all the other engineering things that people are requesting right now, <laughs> we've, we've thought about, uh, hiring, um, we, you know, we, we just completed our fundraise, um, recently. So before that's not something that, uh, you know, we had the capability to do. Right. But, you know, like having a small team is, is actually very nice at, at this stage. So it allows you to really stay lean and, and move really quickly. So sometimes um you know some people say um the more people you have in your team it's like a larger ship and it's actually kind of harder to steer a, a larger um ship you know so right now it's it's especially in such early stages as in physical i think it makes a lot of sense for us to stay lean right now and you know kind of um keep like a low burn and 
and if if talking about hiring kind of like slowly hire but def definitely not do something like hire a lot immediately that's that, that's definitely out of question <laughs> we're still so early in this journey to i think make in physical significantly more accessible to everyone and that's something that we definitely want to target across you know, like a whole range of initiatives that you can see on our roadmap um, in the next like six months that's well said. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for the answer here. And um, could you could you highlight maybe any surprises that you've had so far within open source? Um, any surprises? The whole thing was a surprise. <laughs> we have one contributor named Aki that um, contributed, like uh, redesigned basically every single component on the platform. Went in and and created like a whole set of like here's the here are all the buttons the secondary buttons the input fields the select field like you know this is what a card what a pop-up will look like he just did implemented the entire re-implemented the entire standardized design system for us and so you know it just comes to show i think how powerful open source is you know in terms of getting feedback as well as you know, you you have like collective power of so many contributors, everyone kind of coming together for a greater cause to create something amazing. A lot of different reasons why people contribute, right? And and this, you know, this is like something I think I, I ask contributors as well. So like uh, we, we schedule these different code walkthroughs for contributors. Um, so I get a chance to actually zoom and meet with, with a lot of the contributors before they start contributing. And, you know, these are some of the questions that I ask, right. Um, as well as like, how did you find in physical mm -hmm. and such, but, you know, like some people do it, um, just because they love, they, they love contributing. Like they just love, <laughs> they just d do it because, you know, um, other people do it to gain like, um, learning experience. So. Like there's some, there's one contributor that I work with right now, for instance, um, who is a student right now in college, like a second year. Um, and they don't have, they have like uh, experience in the school academic setting, writing different programming functions and stuff, but not as much in terms of actually uh, shipping like production software, let's say, you know, to real users and stuff. And so part of their motivation as well is to actually like, partake in a real project that's being used by real people and and learn you know all the different aspects and they get to do like and and we're super flexible too so they get to contribute anywhere like whether it be some people want to do back end and then sometimes it's like for instance this guy's like he was working on back end stuff and now he wants to transition over to front end we're like cool yeah like go for it and and you know the whole time we we also like advise and we give them tips and stuff as well. And so learning experience is like another another big part of it too. And 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 that's a highlight here. I mean, I think there's a lot more room for for this to become you know for this to be a more usual phenomenon. College students contributing to open source because as you said, like what are the chances they have for shipping you know production software mm -hmm. at the best the summer internship with like a small you know scrappy startup, right? So. That's I mean right, right. And, and and the thing is there they might they might be confined to like one small mm -hmm. function for instance but in our case it's like you come to us and we're like here's a whole list of things like pretty much like look at all of these GitHub issues and it's like outside of these GitHub issues like you can pick out an item from a roadmap or or these other five different things that we can like propose as well and so it's like so flexible and it's it's awesome you know when we were starting out. Um, you know, there was one founder that, that we reached out to that we didn't think would like answer and, and they actually like answered and they helped, you know, hit me up on Twitter, uh, dang Tony 98. Um, you can also join the Slack channel as well. I'm on there 24 <laughs> seven. I mean, la last thought would, would just be like, uh, believe in yourself and, and, and you can do it, you know, I, it's, it's. I don't know. I, I just feel like going, having graduated uh, from college, like quite recently, I would say that um, from what I observed, I didn't think there were enough people that were as serious about entrepreneurship and startups as a possible career path. And sometimes like it takes talking to more other founders and, and being exposed to that community more to realize like there are really people out there that are, are building awesome stuff, you know? 
are building things and, and, and making careers out of startups. So I would really encourage uh, more people to believe in themselves. If that's the path that they want to do, um, then, then go for it.